Come on, Grace. We have to leave now. We're going to be late for our visit. Come on. I've been waiting for you. Don't you remember you have an appointment? Oh, Grace, where are you? Do you have the stuff that you have to take? Oh, no. I forgot about a visit. But give me a minute and I'll be ready. Uh, what do I need to take? Oh, no. She hasn't even packed yet. Uh, yeah, I did. Pack my bag. Um, I just was looking for my bag. I'm ready. We can go now. Okay, you have to hurry, otherwise we're going to be late. time for a wonderful story and workshop. Will you be able to help me today? Help you? Sir, I don't know anything about the tools in my bag. I've never used these tools before. Don't worry, Grace. I will help you all the way. I will tell you a story as we go. Oh, I can't wait. Can we start now? Yes, we can. I will tell you the reason why I love to work in this little workshop. I'm making lots of different things every day and there's always something to learn. I've learned to use all the tools and you will see that every tool is special. And I will use them in different ways to form and shape the clay. Oh, do you get different kinds of clay? How do you know what clay is good for what you want to make? Do you need anything else to make something? Yes, you get different types of clay. Some are harder, some have lumps in it. But the secret is in the plying of the clay. Sometimes I have to leave the clay, the hard clay in the water for a long time. Are we going to make something today? Yes, we are. Ooh. But you have to think and plan a little before making something. What can I make? What happens if I make it and I don't like it? Can I start again if it's complete? Grace, you have to look at how much clay you have. You cannot make a huge bowl <clears throat> if you have a piece, little piece of clay. You know, Grace, working with clay makes me think of God. When God created you and everybody else, He had a plan. He knew exactly what He wanted for you and your life. The Bible tells us in Psalm 139 that God has formed you in your mother's womb and God has a plan for your life. God also says to us in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I know the plans I have for you. Oh yes, I know a little song. I know the Lord will make a way for me. Potter, this plan, is this the plan I need to have before making something? No. But it's almost the same. God had a perfect plan for your life before you were born. And He knows where you are going and what is going to happen to you. He will form and shape you so that you can be what He planned you to be. What happens if I don't know God's plan for my life? Uh, that's a big question. You might be in a bit of trouble. Why? Well, God will have to ply you again, mold you, twist you, shape you, until you fit His plan. It is just easier for you to let God show you the way. He will guide you and lead you as you grow in Him. As you grow, you will be formed to complete God's plan. So, does God have a plan for me? <laughs> Most definitely. 
when God created you, He knew exactly when and where you were to be born, what you were going to look like. With pottery, it is exactly the same. Before we start working with the clay, it has no shape and it doesn't look like something at all. But when we're done, it will be a beautiful clay pot. Last like the one on the other side of the table. Ooh, that is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> now to your tool bag. We have lots of tools we use to shape the clay. And this reminds me of always of God's tools for us. God? Tools? Oh, what type of tools does he have? Well, let me explain it this way to you. When you start working with your clay, you will need water, mm -hmm. coiler tools, knives, and cutters to form your edges. And this, you can imagine, can sometimes be a very sharp feeling. Imagine this clay is you. God then uses things like the Holy Spirit, the Bible, your mommy, daddy, other people and circumstances to form you. I don't like this. It sounds as if it can be quite painful. Oh, Grace, you are so correct. God sometimes uses a tool that can be hurtful, but He needs to remove everything that makes us ugly, nasty, or rude. And sometimes He just needs to cut something out of our lives. Oh, it's just like the clay when we want to shape it or change something. We can cut, form, or shape the clay until we are happy with the shape. Is the clay all the same? Uh, no, it's never the same. You get hard clay, soft clay, lighter, darker types of clay. This is just like people. We are all different. And we are never ever the same. Some of us are so hard, we have to hit with a hammer and left in water for months oh, no. to become soft again. There are some things the potter has to do before he can use the clay. He has to get it ready for use. What does he have to do? And how do you know the clay is ready to be used? Well, the first thing the potter does is to look at the texture of the clay. The clay must be soft and pliable. And this is just like a human attitude. You see, sometimes we do not like where God puts us or we do not like what he does with us and then we want to change. When this happens, God needs to redirect us. This means that he has to center you again on his potter's wheel and start to shape us over again. But if you are where God wants you to be, then it is easier. In this way, if you say, this is the day that the Lord hath made, I will rejoice and be glad in it then it doesn't matter what happens to you. You will be happy where you are and what he does with you. Mm. Is the clay always happy when you work with it? And, um, hmm, does the clay enjoy it when you work with it? Well, Grace, sometimes you have to put a lot of pressure on the clay to get it into shape and to start taking on the form you want it to be. Let me say again, it is like when God sometimes puts pressure on us to move us a little bit. Sometimes He has to apply lots of pressure to make sure we start to take on the shape He planned for us. I think God put pressure on us because He loves us. But before we go on to the story, look around you. What do I need to look for? <laughs> look at the people. Uh, uh, are they all the same? No! Did you look around, kids? Do you see all the different people around you? Look around! Look around! <laughs> we all look different. Not one of us have the same fingerprints. Not one of us have the same size hands. And none of us have exactly the same abilities. But God has a plan for each and everyone's life. Why do we have to bake our pots in that very hot oven? When you create your pot, you're finished. But the clay is still soft and it can be damaged very quickly. 
Therefore you need to go through a very high temperature, hours of baking, so that your pot can be strong and hard. Only once you have baked the raw clay and it has become hard, can you apply a layer of glaze to finish the product. Oh, I understand. It's like a test of our faith. Sometimes it feels like we are in the fire. But I know if we are trusting God, He will help us even when things are too hot, like Daniel and his three friends. I see that some of the pots come out of the oven all cracked up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Grace, you are absolutely correct. When the clay is not ready for the oven, it comes out of the oven full of cracks. <laughs> there are some pots with cracks. It's like a water jug with a crack that cannot hold water. This means that this jug can no longer hold water. This will make that jug useless. Grace, mm -hmm. <coughs> this also happens to God's children. When we are not ready, and we think we are, we then get into the fire, and there was trouble, and we crack. This means that our beauty as God's child is damaged. And we cannot be that very special masterpiece he wanted us to be. Well, that's not good. What will we be? Oh, no. What will then happen to this clay? Well, if you finish your product, it's not like you planned it. You have to break it into pieces and grind it into fine paste again. Add water. And after a very long time, can you make something new with the clay? You have wasted your time then. Uh, sometimes it's the same with us. If you're not in God's plan, God has to make big changes in your life and He needs some, to sometimes break what is in place. Remold, reshape, and get you back in line with His plan. You may even have to be broken up again and the potter will have to use his hands to form and mold you all over again. My head is Spinning. I never understood this process, but I do understand it now. There are so many different stages. We have to plan what we want to do with the clay. This is exactly how God planned my life and your life as it is today. Yes, it is the same for all of us here today. We are the clay in the potter's hands and he has a plan for our life. He created us, and He knew what He wanted to use us for. It is of no use if you are created to be a water jug, and you try to be a fruit bowl. You are not going to get any fruit in a water jug. <laughs> You're just going to be fruit juice. <laughs> yes, Grace, you're right. Remember, kids, you are God's creation. He made you so special. And just like every beautiful pot, you have a special place in his heart. Just like every pot has a place in the potter's house. God has a special place for you because he loves you. Thank you, Mr. Potter. I have learned so much today. And I will never, ever, 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 ever forget that we are the clay in the potter's hand. And he will form us as he needs to. And if we allow him, we will be in that special place he wants us to be. Well, I hope you enjoyed your visit today. And remember, if you look at your hands, know that God made you like the potter molds the clay. Bye for now. Bye. 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 Bye.